Look, I know in my last haul I said I wasn't going to get carried away and buy even more omnibuses and hot toys, but even I didn't believe myself when I said it. We're both. Hey guys, it's me Marcus, aka the Mad Dog, and we're back with another video. Now, the first book that I picked up in September of last year was Batman Under the Red Hood Deluxe Edition. Now, with DC Deluxe Editions, I've said it a few times, that if you don't pick these up, they will suddenly disappear and go out of print. The Red Hood story arc was one of the first mainline Batman books that I read after Batman Hush, and it's been so many years since I've gone back and revisited it, but at the same time, I know it's something that I do want to read again. Primarily because of the fact that even when I was reading this the first time around, I didn't believe that Jason Todd would continue to be a staple in the Batman universe. I thought they were going to find another way to kill him off again, but they've really redefined him with the Red Hood character. And it will be great to go back to where it all started, and I just think that this was phenomenal value for money, considering that this is thicker than some of the omnibuses that DC's printed. It's also got the Last Days miniseries, which was something that I never jumped into, so it's just really exciting that I can get this all under one hardcover. After that, I then got a massive shipment from the Channel Z EU sponsor, Comics Bugle. Cavetto and the team over there have been a massive help to this channel in recent months, and if you're in the EU, they can be to you as well. They've got great free shipping, free gifts with every order, and if you use code WOOFWOOF, woof, you'll get 3% off all items that aren't already in a sale. And I can personally recommend them because the first book they were kind enough to send me was the Super Sun Super Duper Omnibus Edition. Now yeah, there is a very controversial history when it comes to this book and just the way that DC's handled this entirely. I loved what I read of this team from the first Omnibus, and yeah, I was annoyed that they didn't just print a volume 2, but either way, now that we've pretty much got all of this, and I feel pretty confident in saying that DC won't do a Super Duper Expanded Edition Omnibus. Boss. Although honestly, I'm not holding my breath. But it just feels great that this is now back in print and it's been updated and I can have this enter in the collection and it can go nicely alongside the Superman, Batman, Detective Comics and Green Lantern Co omnibuses that have been done for Tomasi. Another book that Comics Bugle were kind enough to send me was Captain Marvel by Peter David. As soon as I saw this DM edition, even though I hadn't read any of the issues at that point, I knew that I needed to pick this up. This cover by Alex Ross is just phenomenal, but then when I was doing research for my Marvel Iceberg video, which which was such a massive passion project that if you haven't seen it already I definitely recommend checking it out. One of the topics involved this series so I decided to check some of it out. And I'm already quite a big fan of Peter David and I find it amazing that he's one of those creators that never really seems to have dropped off. But I really like what I've read of this so far, Jenny's is a really interesting main character and I like that this is just a textbook sci-fi epic. The fact that all of this is in one hardcover that at the moment is currently really hurting my wrist just meant that it was too good of an opportunity to pass up and I'm very grateful that Comics Bugle sent it over to me. But they weren't done looking after me yet because he also sent across the Marvel Zombies Return Omnibus. Marvel Zombies was that thing that when I was growing up and first getting into comics, I really gravitated towards this universe. I like the fact that a lot of this seems like self-contained series, so it is going to be one of those titles that I can jump in and out of. And not every storyline needs to be a game changer, you can just have something that's a bit daft, and that's why I really like this universe. I'm hoping that this is as fun as the original series that was done by Robert Kirkman, but either way, I'm just very grateful that this is entering the dog pound. Also, there was a book that I said to Cavetto that I really wanted him to put aside for me because I knew that this was probably going to go out of print at some point. It was one of my most anticipated omnibuses for last year, but in case you haven't guessed already, it's Thor by Jason Aaron Volume 2. It feels like it was only the other month where we were theorising if this was ever going to get printed, and we went through all the drama of the War of the Realms omnibus, which I know I did a separate video on, and now that this book has released and we don't have to guess anymore because we know it's got the main War of the Realms issues in it, I was able to free up some space and get a little bit of money back by selling that omnibus. So I am very happy that this has been printed the way that it has and that it completes out the Jason Aaron run. And like I said, Comics Bugle look after me because October was also my birthday. And I'd mentioned it in passing but they were kind enough to gift me the Batman and Robin Eternal omnibus. Now when I mentioned this book I asked if they'd put one aside from the damage sale and they did and there is absolutely not a single dent on this. Every time I've bought something from their damage sale it comes in better condition than if I ordered it from Amazon. But Batman Eternal was that series that I read quite a good chunk of but then I dropped off towards the end and by having this sequel volume come out, it's kind of re-inspired me interest to go back to the original. I love pretty much everybody who's in the creative team from this book. James Tinney and the Fourth did a phenomenal run on Detective Comics. Scott Snyder, of course, did the run from the New 52, which, yes, of course, is my jam. We've even got merchandise on maddogcomics.com to prove it. And I'm just really excited to see what this collaborative team can do together. From what I've seen of this run, it does look like it involves a lot more of the Bat family, which lately just seems to be the type of books that I'm gravitating towards. 
so I'm hoping that this is no exception, and once again, I'm really grateful to Comics Bugle for sending this across. Then it was fairly quiet on the comics front until he got around to Christmas, and I wanted to get Shadowcat a few stocking fillers, and she may think that this was me trying to be nice, but at the same time, it was because it was bugging me that this series only needed one more volume, so I had to make sure that I picked it up for her because it's Saint Young Men Volume 10. Now yeah, I'm not a manga guy, so... Stop accusing me. But this does seem to be a really fun series that she's enjoyed the first few volumes of that she's read already. And I am secretly glad that this isn't going to be one of those mangas that goes on for about 700 volumes. By the way, it just feels nice that I could buy you something that also finished out a series. And you know what they say, when one series ends, another begins. So I then decided to pick her up The Girl From The Other Side Volume 1. I saw her checking it out in Waterstones, but she passed up on it, so I knew that that was a perfect opportunity to buy this. I did also get a Volume 2 because I didn't want it to be the case that this is one of those series that we start but we never finish and at the minute it doesn't look like there's too many volumes of this so I'm not too bothered about this entering the collection but whilst we were in Waterstones that time she did decide to pick up one book and that was Marvel Meow. Now yeah I've secretly become a cat lover in the last few years and this book is just wholesome also daft. It's just a compilation of little mini one-page stories about different heroes within the Marvel Universe interacting with various cats. And honestly, I'm saying that out loud and I'm like, why would I ever pass that up? But it is just one of those books that if Shadowcat's having a bit of a bad day, she can just jump into it and read a few pages, and it's one of them that just puts you in a good mood. So it may be a very thin book, it might seem pointless, I don't know where it sits in continuity, but I'm still glad that it's entering the dog pound. And in return, and in her continuing quest to make sure that she tries to get me into manga, she picked me up a few books. Again, I saw these when I was in Waterstones and they just look silly and sometimes that's what I need. I am a dumb reader. So she picked me up volumes 1 and volumes 2 of Superman Meshi. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And this caught me attention because in literally every single page Superman is eating something so I really want to know what the plot is around that. But I don't know if these do have a plot but either way I am fully invested in these. The daft, the light hearted, the very easy to read and sometimes that's all I need. She also pick me up Batman Justice Buster Volume 1. Now Batman is one of those characters that I've learned that I love looking at him regardless of what the style is. Unless of course it's Frank Miller in The Dark Knight Strikes again. But just from flicking through these pages, Batman really works within a manga style. I don't know anything about this, it doesn't even have a blurb on the back cover, but at the same time I am very invested in this. It's probably going to be one of those that I'll sit down and just blast it out in one sitting, so I'm very grateful that Shadowcat bought this for me. But I think she knew she had to balance things out, it couldn't just be all manga so she knew this was a book that I'd been looking at for a while, but that is the Batman Adventures Omnibus Volume 1. Now this is a very whammy boy, but at the same time I am very excited to jump into this because the only part of this that I've read up until now is Batman Mad Love. But I love Batman the Animated Series and the style that Bruce Tim developed and the fact that it pretty much gave us Darwin Cook as a result, which I'm going to explain further in an upcoming video, so make sure you're subscribed. So to have all these stories in one omnibus is something that I didn't think would happen, but I'm very glad they did and they sent in the dog pound. But if you still haven't picked up this book and you really want to, I'd recommend jumping on it as soon as you can. And if you did want to pick it up or any others, then you can get them for a little bit less with the discount codes that we've got with the channel sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping, and amazing customer services. And if you use code WOOF WOOF, you'll get $2 off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together, make sure you use code WOOF WOOF, ship it together for 5% off your entire order. Don't worry, you can just copy and paste them from the description down below and you can use these codes as many times as you like. And because we've been together for a few years, she knows I've got one massive weak spot, which is normally right behind the back of the head. But it's also Power Rangers. I am so grateful that Boom Studios is continuing to print these deluxe editions, because after it relaunched as both Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers, I did not have a clue what the reading order was. But everything about this series that I've read so far, I absolutely love, and it's just great that it feels like the thing that was my show when I was growing up has finally had that time to get a reinvention. And in all honesty, I'd really love them to launch different series based on the different properties that Saban had. Boom Studios, please do a Big Bad Beetleborg series. Do something on VR Troopers. Sign me up and I'll do a great mini series on the Gold Zeo Ranger. And I'm being deadly serious on that one. By the way, I know that Boom Studios has got even more of these coming out on the horizon and I am very excited and I am fully in for all of them. Another book that I got Shadowcat for Christmas was Castlevania The Art of the Animated series. But she loves this series and art books is one of those things that we've got like a little corner for in the collection. So this because the inside pages look so beautiful, I knew it was one that I needed to get for it. And I hope in 2024 we pick up a few more art books. And an actual book book that my mum and dad got me was the new Arnold Schwarzenegger one. If I'm
I'm being honest, I think he's going to need way more than seven tools to fix what's going on in my life. But Arnold Schwarzenegger has been that guy that I've looked up to since I was pretty much born. This is a signed copy, which I didn't think I'd ever get anything that's actually signed by Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not numbered though, so I'm not pretending that this is something super rare. I don't think that Arnold was somewhere in California going, I need to make sure I sign this for Marcus. Never said I was good at impressions. And I know I never normally talk about the book books that are coming into the collection, but I felt like this one was special. But to round out the year, Comics Bugle were kind enough to send me another shipment. Young Justice by Peter David Volume 1. Again, Peter David, he really hasn't gone wrong, but I know that I read some of this when I was growing up. But I am very glad that DC is pushing the boat out a little bit with the series that they're printing, and it feels like they're really stepping out their import and not just relying entirely on Batman. This is a perfect example of this. I don't know if or when they're going to do a Volume 2, but either way, I am fully in for this. The heroes that build up this roster are some of the ones that I think are the most entertaining child characters that we've got in all of comics. So to have them all together whilst at the same time giving me that nostalgic vibe, I am just very excited that this A got printed and that B, Comics Bugle were kind enough to send it to me. Another one that they sent across to me that I thought I wasn't going to get a chance to pick up and I completely missed the boat on was Spider-Man by Chip Zdarsky. I know some people call this the ketchup bottle cover, but I just love how simplistic it is. And I recently finished up Chip Zdarsky's run on Daredevil, which I really enjoyed. Like, Life Story was something that I enjoyed, but it felt separate from the regular continuity. But I haven't delved into his spectacular Spider-Man run or the Spider's Shadow storyline. So there is still that element of the unknown for me, which really makes me excited to jump into this. And as well, this kind of reminded me of the pandemic days, because pretty much as soon as this came out and got released, it seems like it was out of stock everywhere. Comics Bugle does have a few more copies of this in, and I think they've got some of the other covers as well. So don't sleep around on this, because I think this could disappear overnight. The last omnibus that I picked up pretty much came just before I started recording this. I got it from books, etc. And even though bills have been tighter over the last couple of months, I put money aside because I knew I couldn't miss out on this one. I even put it in my top 15 most anticipated omnibuses for this year because it's Thor by Kieran Gillen and J. Michael Straczynski. I know, I got the names the wrong way around. Now, the original printing of this has been in and out of my collection on three separate occasions, but as soon as this one got delivered, it felt like the king was finally home. This is the way that I wanted this book to map out. I'm so happy that it's got Siege included in it as well, and that I don't have to hunt down that complete collection of the Kieran Gillen run, and there was also an Ultimate collection, which I think was pretty much the same thing. But this was my first Thor run, and the Oliver Copia lot has stuck with me ever since. I'm glad that when I got this, I didn't feel disappointed, and that it was still missing something, and that I can finally put this in my collection and just be comfortable with it. But as you guys might know from last year, I started getting into Hot Toys. I don't know why, I really don't have the money for it, but by God are they beautiful. And there were some that I knew I couldn't miss out on, and the first one was the Green Goblin. And this is phenomenal, I don't know why anybody would buy this without the glider, this was the only version of it that I was going to get. Hopefully for the 20th anniversary of Spider-Man 2, which just makes me feel old by saying that. They're going to do like an updated Doc Ock, but I don't really know if that's going to happen. So I knew if at bare minimum, I just needed Green Goblin and Spider-Man. And of course, yeah, because I've got low impulse control, that wasn't the only one that I bought towards the end of the year. For whatever reason, they made the main Spider-Man 2 figures limited edition, but I really wanted the advanced suit 2.0. Luckily, one of my friends in Hong Kong had a few spare, so I managed to get into the collection. And again, this is just another one that has phenomenal shelf presence. I love the symbiote piece for it and also just the arms. I'm glad that I held out and didn't pick up the 1.0 version of the suit when I saw people selling them off because I am very happy that this has entered the dog pound and this suit has really grown on me over the years. But there was one figure in particular that got me into Hot Toys in the first place. I didn't realise how long of a wait it would be for it. I didn't realise that I'd be buying Hot Toys in the meantime since then but there was always one that I had my eye on and I'd put so much money aside so that I could pick it up. Because I just didn't want the standard version of this character. I wanted the deluxe version. I wanted the bat signal version because it's Robert Pattinson's Batman. Now, yeah, I know there are some people that don't like this movie, and for whatever reason, they make a point of telling you anytime you even mention it. I love this suit. I love this movie. I'm very excited for the sequel, but at the same time, I'm also apprehensive. So there was no way that I was going to miss out on this. But one thing I don't understand, and I'm not sure if anybody can explain this, why do Hot Toys now have separate rolling eyeballs? Why would I ever not want them to be looking in the same position? But regardless of what Hot Toys produced, there was still always going to be one thing that felt 
missing. You've already seen them in the back of the videos ever since. I'm absolutely in love with these, but I only really jumped on them because I saw a guy in a Facebook group called Gabe, who also watches the channel, so if you're watching, hello. But it is the 3-0 Mighty Morphin Power Rangers set. I did also get the White Ranger, which you can see behind me, and like I said, Power Rangers was just that show for me. So as soon as they announced Zeo Gold, I'm definitely going to be buying the full Zeo team, and I love these. I was blown away by them because for years, I told myself that I was fine with just having me figure arts, but as soon as you start getting something in 1 6 scale over 1 12, you know that you need everything in it. But that's everything that I picked up towards the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024. I know it's probably not a huge haul, which is why I didn't do it seasonally. I wanted to make sure I could do a video when there's enough to talk about, but I'm going to leave it there for now, and until next time, just make sure that you stay safe and stay mad, all you dogs. We're both. See you at the next video.